gentlemen and ladies welcome to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video if you're new here hi lillian here but if you are returning thank you for always coming back i appreciate you loads so in today's video we are taking a look at the ghanaian female military officers and i hope i get a like on this video if you have not subscribed please hit the subscription button ensure you on the bell notification so that anytime i upload a video youtube will notify you while i was on the internet trying to see if i can find like a military body that, that governs the female military officers globally that was how i stumbled on these amazing videos that i want to share with you guys but right now i have got so many now i don't know where to begin from so but as always i would like to take us back to the very beginning which is the training because they do it just like any other like just like the male so their trainings it is the same for the men and the women and i think i should start from there before we go further so let's take a look at just a little bit of some of the trainings <laughs> The training is, is the same. It's basically the same. Before we go further to the international impact that the Ghanaian military women are making globally, I would like us to take a look at the very first female military officer from Ghana that made it to the international space and the very first in history of female soldiers ever. So let's take a look at her clips together and I'll come back for more. Let's go. Today we're privileged to have one of Ghana's finest ladies, a general of the Ghana Armed Force Brigadier General Constance Ama Emefa Ejiani Afenu. Madam, thank you. Sir. It's a privilege to be with you. Such a historic person. The success story of females. Yeah. Yes, so I mean the minister couldn't ever be wrong. Yeah. Yes. UN has appointed me mm -hmm. to take over a post mm -hmm. in Western Sahara. Mm -hmm. The UN mission there which is abbreviated and called MINESO. Okay. As a deputy force commander. And that will be the first time that a female is taking up that position deputy in that force commander. in that mission. Okay. Yes, we have had a deputy female commander elsewhere mm -hmm. but for that mission it will be the first time. Wow. and in ghana it will be the first time that a female, female. is taking up wow. that position congratulations so thank you very much thank you very wow. much i joined the ghana Manichi in the year 1978 straight from school and i'm talking about the wesley girls high school in Cape Coast. okay I joined the military with the regular intake 21. Six form. I yes, guess. yes, from okay. six form. Yes. Okay. In those days, um, most of us who joined the regular course mm. were six formers. Okay. Six formers. Okay. Records indicate that Ghana, being the second highest contributor of troops to the United Nations Peace, out of 122 troops, contributing a significant percentage of female peacekeepers that is close to the attainment of the United Nations recommended quota. Now, to me, she looks so calm. She looks like a pastor's wife. <laughs> she does not look like a military officer. I have a friend and a classmate of mine back in school who later joined the military. If you see her, you will know 
that she's a military officer. She have always wanted to visit Ghana. I don't know. I think anytime she comes to Ghana, I'll let you guys know. I'll, I'll show you guys. Once you see her, you, you will know she's a soldier. And she used to ride a bike all the way from her barrack at Maryland. She used to ride a bike to other parts of Ikeja. In fact, anywhere, even VI, she will go on a bike by herself. But in the case of Madame Ama, she looks so calm and gentle. <laughs> and of course, a product of Wesley Girls Cape Coast. So that is the woman who paved ways for most of the military officers you are seeing today. She's more like a role model to so many young women. And it's something that is very impressive. Now let's go to the UN and see the impact that, that the Ghanaian female military officers are making internationally. And I will be back. Let's go. I'm a bit nervous, but I will adjust. I miss my local dishes, my wachi, my banku, the weather. I'm leaving my country, Ghana, to help with peacekeeping. Your commitment to duty is outstanding. As a woman, it's a great feeling to be given this opportunity to go where men are also going. I'm okay with it and the family is okay with it. I love to say some 2,000 percent. Being a first time peacekeeper is going to be a challenge for us. There are some things my troops will be expecting me to know and I'll have to keep up and make sure um, I lead them as I ought to. The service has enabled us, given us an environment where women are given equal opportunities as men. It's a great feeling to go where men are also going. Was able to raise two kids and still be a prison officer able to juggle work with home and i realized that if my mom can do it why can't i do it when i reached um, secondary school i started thinking of probably joining the military yes i see you because i didn't see anything about military in here they felt so wise i should stay with my uncle who is a colonel he was a lieutenant colonel then and they felt a wise I should stay with him since he is still in the service and can coach me better than applied into the service. Daddy does her things on point. So I think that's also part that she has also got that discipline from this house. It's something I always wanted to do all right but it takes time so when I got the opportunity and they nominated me to come I was glad because I actually wanted to come so I'm almost getting to a captain stage I need to learn this be able to experience some things other people are experiencing in their country so when you come back to Ghana you can implement it and it will help you grow before I forget to tell you that she is not the only one uh, because I wanted to see more I realized that she's not the only one and it's just so beautiful to see so right now let's go back and take a look at them and take a look at another Ghanaian female military officer that is making impact globally and i'll be back i'm staff sergeant ikuagu constance i'm a radio operator then this is my second time of being in uniform. It's one of our patrol routes. We normally come here to dominate the area of our responsibility and also to let the locals have confidence in us. Okay, uniform here. Oh, okay. Very happy. All the day I was with the children, we were together, 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 we were
فمرتاحين لهم جدا ومبسوطين منهم جدا والمعامله معهم جيده جدا Also, as a woman, I come around for them to see that once I'm a woman among them, they are free and they can interact with me. That the situation is calm, but we can't predict. That is why we continue patrolling. Well, this is our alpha area of responsibility. Currently, we are at 5-20. As you see some women in being in checkpoints, some going on patrols, some also being at the operations room, making sure um, information are reached their final destinations. From uh, Tango Papa Wances, there is no violation and they are on monitoring over. We are on standby. If anything, I will feed you. I'm happy I've been able to accomplish my mission for Gambat and Unifil. And I'll be going home very soon and I'm happy to meet my family. I Please, am I the only one or you also saw how beautiful and serene <laughs> this place looks? Oh my God, I can live here for a living. Is this how beautiful Lebanon is? It's so beautiful. I love the landscape. Oh my God, this is so, this is so, so beautiful. They have a lot of the Ghanaian military officers working with UN right now, but I'm just showing you guys the female, okay? Yeah, I'm not done yet. Um, there are more of them that are currently in Ghana, and I would like us to take a look at them, and I'll be back. Let's go. He was the one pushing me very hard. At a point, you know, I wanted to switch off. Even though people think it's a male-dominated field, it is, it's not so scary. I wanted to be a pilot. If I've not been going to school, where I am today, I wouldn't be there. The girls are have to be educated. It will interest you to know that we are eight girls and two boys. At first, they had the mentality that educating girls was a waste of time. We have a good time. <laughs> Chief of Staff at the President, Ms. Akushia Frema Osei Opari, has appealed for the creation of a special female desk within the Ghana Armed Force to see to exclusive female-related issues to enhance the performance of those in service, as well as influence policies that would remove barriers in female recruitment and advancement. The government's Chief of Staff made the call at a splendid and a historic all-female parade held at Abuga Square, Armored Reconnaissance Regiment, Reki, at the penultimate event of the week-long celebration of 60 years of female participation in Ghana's military. Recounting historical events as the reviewing officer at the extremely impressive and unprecedented celebration to showcase achievement of female of the armed forces. The parade prepared had 22 officers and 203 soldiers of the Army, Navy, and Air Force, forming six contingents from reviewing officer to the parade commander, Lieutenant Colonel Evelyn Azira, the contingent commander, color party troop, the regimental band, vehicle display drivers and crew, ambulance drivers and crew, physical training instructors, the military police, to the flight path by the Diamond DA-42 aircraft and the helicopter, all being females.
is that and they look so beautiful i think there's one thing there's one thing these officers has in common they are so pretty now the military video that i did i wanted to show you guys i forgot to show you guys this particular clips that i stumbled on i think at about that time i didn't know about this i got to know while i was doing research for the female officers that was how i stumbled on this and i said okay let's share it with you guys and um let's take a look at that i'll be back this year at united accord 17 it is the first time u.s army africa regionally aligned forces have been taught solely by african partners at the Jungle Warfare School. Yeah, the Ghanaian soldiers were very professional. Uh, they expected a certain level of excellence. They have a standard that they, that they expect us to meet while we're here. They weren't taking it easy on us. They weren't letting us slack or get away with anything. The major who runs this course, he doesn't play around. He, he, want, he, wants, he has a standard that he's set and he expects you to meet it or exceed it. I have really appreciated their way of lowering themselves to be taught. Some people come with other mentality, ideology, thinking that always superiority counts and all those things. But for now, I have really enjoyed the way they have been very sober to the instructors and the instructors who have done very well by cooperating with them very well. They've taught us jungle survival, the skills, how, how to feed off of the environment, the vegetation that is good to eat and what's not good to eat. They've taught us how to purify water and how to, how to survive in the jungle environment when you are left with no supplies. They've taught, how, they've taught us how to make the jungle cooperate with us rather than against us. The one thing that the Ghanaian soldiers say a lot and the jungle instructors say a lot is the jungle is neutral. The jungle takes no sides. So they have taught us how to get the jungle on our side and how to use what the jungle has to offer. I think that the next time they come, I'll remove the human face and then make it more tougher for them so that they can see the reality of how things are. Staff Sergeant Jeffrey Sandstrom, Jungle Warfare School, Ghana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people come all the way from other countries to train. The U.S. Army came to Ghana. <laughs> God, I beg you. The way some of, some, some of you Ghanaians underrate your country. The way you underrate your country. Seriously, if I knew that this is what it is like, I, I wouldn't have come to Ghana. So I would just continue to be in the dark. So I will not know what is happening. What is, I will not know that there are other people living life. See, I know that Ghana is not easy, uh, especially in terms of the cost of our uh, living, which is right now almost like a global thing. But trust me, some of the things you guys have gotten right, eh? you guys have gotten right. It's just okay to accept it. Trust me. And I'm not in any ways giving accolades to any political party. Please, I'm begging because I keep seeing these warnings. Stop doing content about this. I don't know if the security body in Ghana is also politicalized and all that. But trust me, uh, this has nothing to do with politics. I'm talking about, I'm just talking about things in general, like people coming into your country to, oh God, oh God, you know, go understand what the Lord has done for you. Eh? <laughs> You won't understand what the Lord has done for you. So I wanted to check out and see if they have like a female music band. I realized that in the military, it is not really a female men thing. They do things together, like they roll together. So I couldn't find anything feminine in the um, about their musical band. So already I have played the military music band in the military video that I did. If you would like to see, I will urge you to go down my channel and check. You will see the military video and the music band was included in that. Almost everything was in it. The only thing I didn't do was this special shout out to this amazing female officers that are making Ghana proud globally. I do hope that you enjoyed this video and that you tune in for more as I will see you in my next one. Ciao.